I recently made two videos about saving the player's progression with resources in Godot. One of you pointed out how it's unsafe to use resources if players download save games from the web, for example, to unlock content without having to grind. Godot's resources can bundle code, and that code could be malicious. We say that resources support arbitrary code execution. Some of you care very much, so I decided to take some time to look into it. And it turns out you can combine resources and a safe format like JSON to get security without losing flexibility. In this video, we'll first look at how resources can execute arbitrary code and all the features you should avoid to keep your saves secure. We will then see how you can still use resources for save games, but use JSON for writing and loading the data. Resources can still be very useful for your game's data or plugins, but for save games you may want to use a different format. Let's look at the problem in Godot. I have a working save game here using resource, and please note that you can download it and find the previous videos on our website, the link's in the description. So um, this demo uh, I've modified to have a save game with some code injected into it. It looks like this. We have the normal uh, save game data so that the game appears to be working normally. And we have some script with some extra code. Uh, it has an init function that will run automatically when loading the save game. And to achieve that, we create a new resource that has a script attached and we attach that resource to our main save game. We can use the meta property to not modify any of the normal save data. So the player cannot see this happening normally. Now, if I run the game here, I get a pop-up. This is something running on my operating system, so it might look different on Windows, for example. It's just to show that this can run code outside of Godot. Let's say it can access your files, it can download stuff, it can do anything it wants, really. And for the player, they would just be able to play the game normally, to move around the map and all, they wouldn't see anything. Now, the challenge with that is that it actually affects quite a few useful features in Godot. Uh, here we are saving and loading using plain text resources as shown in the previous videos. But this issue also affects the very popular config file class in Godot that you can use to save and load files with a very simple API. It also affects the function var to string and string to var, uh, which are functions available in GDScript to convert variables into text and vice versa. So these can save and load resources and are unsafe. There is one exception. It's the functions bytes to var and var to bytes. These ones are used for um, web stuff. And so they have extra security by default. So you have this allow objects uh, argument that is set to false by default and that prevents any code from running. If you want to save data as binary, you can then use that and that is safe. For safety, you want to use a format to save and load that does not run any code. And so you have two options available in Godot. XML would be one and another would be JSON. You can pick your favorite or you can make your own, of course. In this alternate demo, um, which looks the same as the other, I've used JSON for simplicity. So I made a new script for my save game. Uh, this time it's not a resource, it extends the class reference because we're not going to save it using the resource system, but it works pretty much the same as in the previous video. It contains resources and this allows us to have the character resource stored here in the user interface and in the player character. And when we update the character stats or something like that, um, it only updates one character object so we can immediately access the new properties and save them. Same for the inventory. But now instead of using the resource saver.save function, we use JSON instead. So I have a different write save game function. And what it does is it first tries to open a file write into, then I convert all the data that I have here into one dictionary. The keys would be the variable names, you can organize them however you want, and then uh, you map some values like the character's position, the character's name, those kinds of things, right? 
And just note that JSON cannot save uh, things like vectors or matrices or some of Godot's built-in types directly. So you have to split them, right? This is why I have a global position. That's a dictionary here with an X and a Y. I have to decompose the player's position on the map. Once you've made your dictionary, all you have to do is to save it. And for that, use the json.print function. And you can then store that string in your file and close the file. When loading, you do the same thing, but in reverse. So you're first going to open the save file, then you get the content as text, and you're going to convert um, the text back to a dictionary using json.parse. This is going to return an object that has a result property, and that result is your game data. And so then uh, you do the same thing as before, but in reverse. That is, you're going to extract the fields from your data dictionary and put them back into your resources and uh, your game data, basically. Uh, this is quite nice because, as I've mentioned, the use of resources makes it so you can have the data accessible in your save game and in the rest of the game systems, but then you also have the safety of JSON. I brought this to the developers and not only have they been helpful as usual, we also talked about the possibility of making resources safe in the future, so stay tuned. You might be able to use resources for save games probably in Godot 4 or something like that. This video, an open source demo, is sponsored by our courses. If you're a beginner, you will love Learn to Code from Zero with Godot. It's a complete course to get started with game development, with tons of lessons and cool interactive practices. If you're more experienced, then Godot Node Essentials is for you. It's the biggest knowledge base about all the things you can do with Godot's nodes. You'll find links in the description below. Be creative, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.